Hi, my name is David Sebesta, and I want to thank you for your interest and for the opportunity to share with you some of our capabilities today. At Chromatid, we focus on direct measurement of genomic structure using our Directional Genomic Hybridization, or DGH, platform. We work with many leading genome engineering companies to visualize genomic structural features from a few kilobases to the entire genome. DGH and sequencing measure different things and are complementary and orthogonal techniques. DGH is a single cell technique and captures structural and cellular context that is lost by analyses of pooled DNA that rely on bioinformatic reconstruction and prediction of structure. Sequencing is great for the analysis of edits at the base pair level and for measuring rates of off-target errors. Sequencing is not the right tool for determining heterogeneous, generally low levels of structural variants that result from misrepair of DNA double strand breaks from any source. The right tool for that job is DGH. DGH directly measures structure and provides definitive visualization of structural outcomes. For targeted edit and integration site analysis, we have DGH insight probes but also offer unbiased discovery and detection of structural variation by de novo DGH assays, which we call DGH screen. So where do DGH assays fit in within the landscape of genomic analytical options? The lower limit of detection for targeted DGH insight probes is around three kilobases currently, although we are working toward uh, even smaller targets. I will also mention that these targeted probes can be used for fish applications as well. Uh, there's just a slightly different sample prep involved. Genome-wide DGH screen provides high resolution structural data as well as karyotype. Uh, finally, there's G banding with typical resolution of megabases that is the current gold standard for structural analyses However, we really are talking about orders of magnitude lower resolution than DGH. That said, Chromatid does offer G-banding as an orthogonal analysis to DGH. Okay, so a quick overview of how DGH works before showing some applications data. With DGH, we analyze single-strand DNA with single-strand fluorescently labeled oligonucleotides. We design the oligos to be complementary only to unique target sequence, and our probes are pools of these labeled oligos. We do a sample preparation that results in metaphases comprised of two oppositely oriented parent DNA strands. The probes were engineered to only bind one strand, and this means rearrangements are very easy to detect. Any out of place signal anywhere in the genome corresponds to a rearrangement. In this fashion, DGH detects not only translocations and complex rearrangements, but also inverted regions. As I mentioned, we work with many of the leading editing and pharma companies developing gene therapies. Our custom assay services have been utilized by our clients all along the critical path to the clinic. We provide not only unique capabilities, but also bring complementary technical expertise to the table. We run a very process-driven operation under a quality management system, and that has enabled us to support multiple regulatory filings. So I'll spend the next few minutes showing some representative assay designs along the lines of what we do for our customers and with our collaborators. Most of what we do is very customized, but the idea here is to show how flexible these DGH tools are. So in these examples, I'm not focusing on the specific results. Rather, my intent is to show how we can parse the qualitative and quantitative information from DGH. In this study, we're using both DGH screen and DGH insight to evaluate edited iPSCs. In this design, there is a probe bracketing the expected insert site in one color and an insert specific probe in a second color. Now this insert is 10 kilobase pairs, which would again be essentially impossible to do with conventional fish. We're also using DGH screen paints for assessing random misrepair 
events and essentially providing for kind of concurrent tracking of general genomic instability. As far as the process outcome goes, we measured the percentage of cells with zero, one, and two on target integrations. And we also observed an unexpectedly high level of off target integrations. We can visualize the images in different fluorescence channels to make clear scoring calls. And we can parse the quantitative data many ways to suit the purposes of the study. Here we're showing the distribution of the number of off target events. One of the potential applications for insight probes is to confirm copy number at each integration site. So our development of this capability is ongoing, but at least appears from relative fluorescence that many of the off-target integrations observed in these edited IPSCs uh, are partial transgenes. As I said, we are working out approaches to qualifying this assay as a means of determining copy number, uh, and there'll be more on that soon. So DGH screen has now been taken to a whole genome level. We use five colors and along with the centromere position and the chromosome size, we're able to assign each chromosome and create a karyogram view of the cell such as this. In this way, we can use DGH screen as a whole genome approach to discovery or detection of structural variants localized to the chromosome arm level. With whole genome DGH screen, we concurrently get aneuploidy data and can measure sister chromatid exchange rates as proxies for repair activity in that batch of cells. This approach has had utility in both variant discovery and cell line QC applications. Okay, for example, we are studying the GM24385 cell line from Coriel, which is the source of the genome in a bottle DNA that is so widely used for qualifying uh, sequencing techniques. So in this most uh, sequenced genome in the world, we have discovered a number of previously unidentified rearrangements, as well as confirmed a known rearrangement. Okay, well, I'll wrap it up there. Um, here is an overview of the products and services that we currently offer, as well as some of the capabilities that are, uh, that are under development and will be launching in the near future. Uh, we've worked with many different types of cells, different types of cell lines, tissues. Uh, we perform research support. We can conduct studies in support of your regulatory filings, and we would welcome the chance to discuss how we could help with any of your um, genomic structural challenges. This presentation will be available on our conference webpage as well as on chromatid.com. Uh, we, uh, we welcome you to reach out um, at any time. Thanks very much.